Hello everyone, this is Alchemisted, and uh, it's really hot here. It's really hot down here right now. It's November. Should The weather should be cooler, but it's not. Oh, God, this place sucks. Anyways, this is going to be a bit of a, a bit more... I'll, I'll explain the whole deal, probably in a separate vlog. This is going... or a separate audio log, mind you. This is going to be uh, just something... Well, I'll get... I'll get it out of the way. I'll, I'll get all the various like site and game stuff out of the way, and then and then I'll talk about the serious subjects, uh, which is what I really wanted to record the v the vlog audio log for. So uh, let's get let's get the first things out of the way first. I have been trying to do uh, Metal Gear Solid. I've been trying to get Metal Gear Solid done. I wanted to get Metal Gear Solid. I wanted to get the first session out last week. Didn't happen. Uh, I, I've been running into all kinds of trouble trying to get this game recorded. Uh, it really dis like Fraps really disagrees with it, so I can't record it. I can't record it off of the computer. I the Dazzle hates the PS One, so I can't re get it recorded off the console. So I'm really kind of stuck in terms of trying to get this playthrough recorded and even started really because I I can get the game running perfectly. On my PC, like I can, I can configure everything fine, and it runs the disc perfectly. Uh, but whenever I record, it just starts stuttering like mad, and not even like, not even like the game itself starts stuttering. It just there's so much slowdown involved. It it just slows to a crawl, and that's been happening with Fraps a lot lately. That that's been happening. That was one of the big problems I had uh, earlier this year. And I don't really know, I don't really know why, it's just all of a sudden Fraps does not seem to like things when I try to record it with him. Thankfully, Star Trek Online still works fine, uh, so you'll still see that fairly constantly. There'll probably be a short, a, a break from Star Trek Online after the, uh, the last of the Davidian episodes. The last two episodes were, like, all five of them were already recorded by, before I even started uploading them. So, um... Yeah, the last two of the Davidian episodes are already recorded. They're sitting on my hard drive. You'll see the next one this Friday. The last one the Friday after that, and then there'll be like a there'll be a hiatus for a while from Rise of the Red Shirt. Uh so I've been having all kinds of trouble with Metal Gear Solid, so I'm thinking I have a couple of options. One is I could still do a Metal Gear Solid. I I was thinking Metal Gear Solid three. Which is canonically the first game, anyways. Uh, there was a time. There was a time last year when I was planning to do a full series playthrough of Metal Gear Solid. But then I remembered I don't have a fucking PS3, so I can't play Metal Gear Solid 4. So that kind of shot. So that kind of got shot down out of the gate. I've been wanting to do another series playthrough ever since the Halo trilogy. Um, at one point, I considered Ace Combat, but Ace Combat 3 is pretty shitty. Uh, it's not it's not the actual game at all. Although thank although thanks to the thanks to that plan that train of thought, I did end up getting uh, Ace Combat five and zero and four, and they're awesome. I, I would recommend I would recommend those three most definitely. If you're a fan of uh, air combat games, if you're a fan of dogfight of uh, Playing simulators. If you're just a fan of shooters, those those games are awesome. But yeah, I've been wanting to do a series playthrough for a while, and uh, I'm still trying to figure out which one. Could do Zone of the Enders, but uh, Zone of the Enders may be sick to my stomach because of, however, they it it, uh, it isn't the voice actress in Zone of the Enders. It's how they've altered her voice for the character of Ada, and the fact that Ada never shuts up. She play, she's chiming in every two seconds about something, and it's the sound of her altered voice somehow makes me physically ill. Like, if you go back and watch the uh, videos I did for Zone of the Enders, if you go back and watch that, uh, I do not sound very... I sound sick to my stomach. Uh... At you know by the end of that, and that's because I was the the sound of that voice 
Not the actresses, because the actress is actually in Star Trek The Next Generation of Final Unity. And uh, I got no problems with her voice acting there. In fact, I think it's rather good. Uh, but uh, in Zone of the Enders, it's however they've masked her, vo- however they've altered her voice to make it sound like a like a compu- like an AI that's speaking to you, and uh, it, it's painful. It makes me physically ill. It hurts physically. Be- playing that game is a physical pain because of how often Ada pipes in and the fact that she never shuts up. So. That's out of the... That gets thrown out of the window. Uh, I was thinking about Siphon Filter, but it, fuck. Half the Siphon Filter games are PlayStation 1 games, and that would mean I'd have to go through Omega Strain again. Fuck that. Um, so I thought about Hawks, but Hawks 2 is really bad. Really, really, really bad. Really, 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 really bad. Hawks 2 is really bad. It's really bad, okay? I'm saying it's really bad. Because it's really bad. Uh, see, I'm kind of stuck right now. I know I want to do a series playthrough. I don't know which. I want to do Metal Gear Solid, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the PlayStation 1 game for a while. I'm going to have to break down and save up for an easy cap. There's just nothing, no way around it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's either down to Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater or Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime is the game I plan to do after Metal Gear Solid. Uh, it's a very, it's a good game on its own. It's pretty good. It's, uh, not, not the most incredible game. But it's certainly very fun. So I was thinking about that. It could be either or. You'll either find out later this week or later the next which one I chose. Uh, if you want me, if you want me to do one over the other, feel free to pipe in in the comments below. But, uh, yeah, there's something else I wanted to talk about really quick. There's something else that has been bugging me for a long time. This summer has been essentially a non-stop barrage of disastrously thought-out legislation involving, uh, essentially policing the internet, uh, you know, first there was a S nine seventy eight, which was which was the which was the ten the ten strikes thing, uh, which was which was the big the huge big deal. Everybody was raising a ruck, ruckus about it, and they which was good because they needed to. Uh, there was such a public outcry at S nine seventy eight that they eventually from what I understand, just decided to let the thing die. They decided, you know, let's, we're going to kill this thing because the, uh, we we can't handle all this. Like, uh, there, there's all this negativity towards it. Everybody's screaming at us to kill it. we got to kill it. Um, which was good. That, that was definitely a victory for anyone who uh, uses the Internet, anyone who has a business on the Internet, anyone who, who uses the Internet... Uh, for creative means, such as making videos or art. Then there was the Internet Blacklist Bill, which is still going through the... uh, I'm not sure if it's in the Senate or the House. I think it's in the House now. And uh, people are still raising an outcry at it. In fact, to the point where the U.S. Chamber of Commerce actually lashed out at all the people who are criticizing the bill, which is everyone, pretty much. Uh, they actually lashed out at at them with some of the most painfully obvious double speak you have ever heard, uh, saying that it's not a blacklist bill; it's a blacklist bill. Uh, and uh, you could like like you could read up you could read up on it at, like demand progress or, or like game politics. You can feel free to read up on it there. It's pretty obvious what it is, and it's pretty and it. The, the their attempt to spin it as, as something else is pretty thin. And uh, right now, being voted upon this week is a resolution of disapproval against the net neutrality rules. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go 
to go out and explain what net neutrality is. Though, chances are though, most of you wa who watch this know what net neutrality is by now. Those of you who don't, there are videos that could explain it far better than I could. Uh, this is just going to be a quick vlog. It would take me at least it would take me like half an hour to explain, you know, what net neutrality is and why it's so important. So feel free to browse around and uh, educate yourself as to what it is and why it's needed. And uh, we're actually quite behind, as we are very late in the game. Uh, we're adopting net neutrality very late in the game compared to other countries, especially South Korea. Although, when it comes to like things like internet speeds and internet policies, South Korea is kind of ahead of us anyways. Coffee. So, the reason I wanted to... The reason I'm mentioning this is because there's, a com there's been a common thread this entire summer... Uh, there's been something that has been pissing me off all summer, and that is that the senator, the uh, Texas senators John Conran or K. Bailey Hutchison, one or the other, has either been spearheading or cheerleading these, and I would just like to go on record here at saying that the fact that these two, these representatives of the state in which I live, have been spearheading these disastrous attempts, have, this, these absolutely, these completely overly broad, unconstitutional, you know, they're, they're, they're either far too broad or unconstitutional, or just disastrously conceived, and they've been spearheading or cheerleading these one after another all summer long. The current uh, the current resolution of disapproval is be, has is ha, was raised by K. Bailey Hutchinson. You know, S nine seventy eight was championed by John Conran. It's disgusting to me that the representatives of my state have are doing this, you know, have been championing these two when practically everybody else has been going, these are ridiculous, these are disastrous, these are, di these are catastrophes waiting to happen. And I feel like I just had to get that out. I, I just kind of have to let out some hot air about that because it's disgusting. These people like these two give the people of my state a really bad reputation. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm not just saying, like, just these two people, but... It's kind of, it's kind of hard putting my thoughts together, because I, I, I have so much that I like to say about these two. Most of it probably couldn't be repeated in polite company. Not that that's ever stopped me before, mind you. As those who watch my videos probably know, but uh, considering that the, these are two politicians, and I this is I, I'm in my default mode right now. I'm not I'm not in like commentary mode, so I'm trying to refrain from some of the language uh, that I would like to use to describe their actions and them in general. It's just sickening. It really is. Th thinking that these two people are representing my state, representing my family, representing the people of everybody I've met or known in my state. We're not... And I like to get this out there to uh, people. There, There's a big stereotype about Texans, and I'm not going to say that all of it is wrong. <laughs> Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say that if you see a, if you see a house, there's about a 50, 50 chance that there's a gun that lives there. There's a 50, 50 shot. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to say that all the stereotypes are completely wrong. I will say that the majority of people in my state are a lot smarter and more reasonable than one would assume from their portrayals in the media. Uh, we're not all like these two. We're not all batshit insane fundamentalists. 
we're not all gun-toting maniacs. We're not all uh, 10-gallon hat-wearing cowboys. In fact, there's a... In fact, in the state of Texas, there are a lot more wannabe cowboys than there are than there are actual cowboys, and you can you can know which one you're looking at simply by looking at the bed of their truck. And if they have a bunch of rusted, like if you look in the bed of their truck and you see a bunch of rusted, unused tools in it, uh, rusted shovels, rusted, cha- you know, like rusted saws. Rusted hammers, nails, all kinds of stuff that's never been fucking used, that's just been thrown back there. With maybe like a plastic tarp over it. Just a bunch of like shit that you would imagine people would buy and have use for and not let rust in the bed of a truck. You know? And if they and if they have a truck, if they have like a new truck that's bright and shiny and all these rusted tools in the back of it, you're not looking at it in an actual cowboy by in any way, shape, or form. And those are those are the majority of what people from other states would perceive as cowboys in Texas. They see they see them walking around in like the denim jackets with like the fucking cowboy hat on. Yeah, most of them are posers. You know, the the tools have cobwebs on them. Yeah, you see those a lot. You don't see like act like actual people who work on actual ranch, ranches tending to actual animals who actually know how to ride an actual horse and not a bar thing the the bar the bar thing that they try and hang on to the the bouncing bull or whatever the hell it is also you don't see those in texas bars <laughs> not nearly as much as you'd think from watching movies but yeah we're not all like this we're not we're not all lunatics and assholes and you know funda- fundamentalist jerks you would think otherwise you know you'd you'd certainly think we were all like that from looking at the actions of Hutchison and Conran over the course of this year but uh we're not i'm just saying just just for anyone listening on behalf of my state, I apologize for these two, and I apologize for their constant, reckless, disastrous attempts at horrible legislation this year regarding online policies, regarding internet policies. I'm sorry for these two, for these two idiots. I really am. <laughs> I, feel, I feel the need somebody has to. Like this is how far like this is how far it's gone. Like I'm a bit like I like I follow demand progress and free and uh demand progress and freedom of fuck, I can't remember the name now. Ah. And free press and such. That's what it is. So, every other week it feels like I get an an email message from demand progress and free press and um free press uh, asking me to email my senators and tweet if you if you follow my Twitter, or or you go to like Blast Fox's Facebook page. I'll put a link. To, I'll put a link to that in the video description here. Uh, you'll see me posting stuff from Demand Progress or Free Press, and uh, it's gotten to the point. It's gotten so bad. It's gotten to the point where I feel like I'm a bartender who. Is cutting somebody who's cutting somebody off. It's like, no, Mr. Conran, no, you can't have any more. No, you've had enough legislation for tonight. You know, it's gotten to that point. It's every week, every week or every other week. I get, I get an email message saying, okay, it, saying there's some disastrous internet legislation on the way, and I look at like GovTrack and I look at the uh the bill or act or amendment that's being introduced and it's got the it's got one or both of their names on it. Jesus Christ. Every time. So yeah, I felt like getting that out there. We're not all like that. We're not all morons. Not like these two are. 
and we're sorry for their actions on behalf of the people of my state. We're sorry for how for how they've been acting this year and the absolutely awful legislation they've been trying to push through all summer. We know they're terrible. We know they're horrible. That's about it. <laughs> That's about all I have to say about them. I kind of felt like I needed to unload. So, uh, yeah, there you go. It'll either be Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater or it'll be Metroid Prime. Like I said, you'll either find out later this week or about Friday next week. If you want to see one or the other, please, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'm probably... Otherwise, I'm just probably going to flip for it. And uh, I'll see you guys later. So, later.